Hi everyone, it's Rex Hardware uh, from the uh, archives from the Bridge Mall in page and I'm here with Chris Ruddock. Hey Rexy, how are you going? Great mate. Now Chris was, gee mate, you wear so many hats as far as the history of the Bridge Mall in. Ruddo was a barman, Ruddo was a punter, Ruddo was a muso uh, and you were also I guess involved at the edges with Patio in booking the place. Yes, that's right. Now, I also lived upstairs for a while as well. Oh. So. <laughs> Talk about a Quinella. So yep. we've got Rudds here. Yep. Uh, the backstory behind today's little chat is that it was before the pandemic, Rudds tells me. Rudds got on the phone in a panic one day and said, Rexy, look, I don't know what to do with my CDs. Like, you know, and I said, what about if I rip them all and take photos of them and we kind of make a permanent record? Yep. The pandemic happened. And the pandemic finished. <laughs> and Ruddo rang me up and went, can I come and get those CDs? Have yeah. you done that thing? And I went, oh, shit, I haven't. So here we are yep. kind of doing it a little bit. Um, I thought what we'd do is, I mean, particularly I love what's happened visually with the visual art element of this. People, you know, back in, as you can see with the posters here behind us from a project in 2018, supported by City of Ballarat, did someone here say Ballarat, like, old poster and costume. <laughs> yeah, that actually might have been the spark of this because I lent you the, um, the Mavises were inducted into the sort of... Um, the Hall of Fame. They got the key to the Ballarat. Key to the city. Key to the city. Yep. And I rang you up and said, I've got lots of Mavises posters from the Bridge Mall Inn. So when I worked there, and, and I think before I was um, just as a punter there, so I worked for, at the Bridge Mall Inn when Andrew had it. Mm. And I was there for about five years. So 96-ish? Yeah, 95, 96, 95, 96 to about 2000, yep. 2001. A, very, then, a golden era, uh, era with so many bands touring and so many awesome local acts that's populating right, yeah. the scene. So the Mavises, of course, um, had just gone, they'd gone to Melbourne by then mm. and were starting to do well. Um, the salesmen were packing out the place all the time. And then there was the metal scene as well. Damage was huge. Mm. Um, well, Damage had left. Dam you yeah. couldn't get Damage in 96 yeah, to do a gig probably at the not. Right, but, I um, So I saw all that sort of stuff at the Bridgie when Donnie and Dave had it pre before um, Andrew took over. So I was just a punter then. Uh, and then I worked for Andrew. And I also worked for uh, probably six months, maybe a year, when Mark and Neil took over. Mm. Um, and they sort of ran a uh, Flugelhorn uh, record company out of the out of upstairs, yep. and um, managed Epicure, who are their sort of most famous act. Mm. And they did very well as well. Like that, they, Epicure took off from there as well. You they played, did. They did the outs. They did the big um, played at Rod Laver with Live Live the American Band. So um, that was because of Mark and Neil, and they were That's working. Right. Out, they were working out of the Bridgie. So a lot of a lot of things happened. They were working with a lot of the other bigger touring uh, agents as well who that's had right. a lot of these acts on their on their roster yeah that's right um and of course ballarat on the way to adelaide and vice versa we got all the great bands so for a month uh when andrew had the bridge mall in we had john butler free entry on a wednesday night and john butler solo supported john butler trio so you got two hours of john butler amazing for free for a month yeah, in the middle of the 90s. Yep. And just then, as his career that's is right. going on. And then off. I remember, you know, 2000, he played at the, at the gardens in Ballarat. And it was, you know, $80 a ticket and there's 5,000 people there. And I that's thought, right. I, I drank with him for yeah. a month at the Bridge Mall. And he was a lovely guy. Um, Same thing with the Waifs that we'll have a look at in a little yeah, while. Yeah, that's right. The Waifs toured relentlessly around Australia. About 10 years before they were really big and got a record label, yep. I think. And they spent years at the Bridge Mall Inn mm. playing and got to know them quite well, lovely people, really mm. lovely people. Um, yeah, I remember, you know, Patio would have them in stitches, yeah, you know, just, you know, they, they thought he was hilarious and, um, you know, he could, as we all know, he could talk to everyone, but, um, yeah. you know, they'd love coming in and have a chat to Patio. So yeah. That was great, yeah. What a tragedy it is that we, we don't have a Patio album to show. Yeah, that's always that's been a right. bit of a dream. Yeah, that's right. He did make a recording with Pat McCabe um, at Pat's house, mm. um, and I think it's about 10 songs. Mm. They called it the South Street Session, but um, they just never got around to print yeah, it. Yeah, I think we'll, we'll hunt down mm. Pat McCabe and see if we can find that mm. and put some of his other stuff. I know I did talk with Eliza about yep. let's pull some stuff together and release a Yeah, make a little, an little, album. A little album, yeah. So, look, what great. I'm loving about all of this is um, there was a very strong visual art um, uh, theme that ran through, you know, the, the release of all of these CDs. Like, artists would often get their friends or themselves to do the artwork. Yep. The fat thing, spoil for choice, they were all visual artists. That's right. Um, and so, look, let's... 
let's go through some of them and have a look visually. And what I thought we might do, Rudds, is we might pick the odd one at the end. Uh, and after we finish filming this, I'll cut together, you know, a track and a picture of the of the uh, album or something. Yep. So people can have a bit of a listen. I know there's also been interest in uh, our archives in the Bridge Mall Inn group about Ruby Fruit Jungle. And I notice you haven't got one. I haven't got one. Someone out there must have a Ruby Fruit Jungle CD. That would be great for us to feature at some point. Uh, we're going to whip through some of the compilation albums first uh, and then we're going to have a look at uh, some of the different acts that toured through, yep. some of the different more obscure local acts and then some of the established local acts who released several albums. Yep. And we're talking about Fat Thing, Dead Salesman, Mavis's, yep. um, that, that, that kind of thing. So, and Rudd and I will talk over the top of this. So let's have a bit of a look at that now. All right, so we're going to start here with uh, uh, one of the iconic Ballarat releases, and that is, did someone here say Ballarat? Um, Rudds was telling me something about that front cover and how they generated that image. How did they generate that image? So, Bren Luke and yourself and Bags and Patio and I sort of helped out with trying to get the bands together. You were very good on the business side of things. Bags was going to do the sound and so were you. Uh, we got, I think there's about 20 bands on, on the whole CD. And Bags and funded it on his Westpac credit card. Yeah. <laughs> Took a risk. <laughs> yeah, right. And there was a very strong local scene at the time, a good 20, 30 local bands playing very regularly. Um, there's the mixing desk from the Bridge Mall in. And Bren did all the, put the artwork together. And the cover that Rex was just talking about um, is a display folder that musicians, you know, you buy for about a dollar and you put all your music sheets in with a plastic... Um, plastic front uh, and Bren just did a focus really tight photo of the um, uh, on the front of the sort of a, d a display folder so to get that ni nice effect I think it's on the other side anyway so that's yeah. that did and then say a bit right? later on um, who was the guy um, at this noodle fest was at SMB, it was a great night. I think you're involved with that with your course. Yeah, the the, the uh, Diploma of Live Production kids, Sean Adams, I think, was involved. Yes, in that's it. right. Um, Jared Rex, Ferguson. Yep, uh, yep, that's right. And um, um, what was the guy's name? That uh, at there it is. Adam Roach. Roachy organised the whole, uh, all the bands, I think. Uh, anyway, SMB used to be great because we had the production. Um, we had the the, the, the the music course. We had the music and course, the live which production I, I course. Did. I did the two-year jazz course, and that went for probably six. Uh, probably three or four sets. Uh, they're all two-year courses. Yep. And I reckon there were three sets, maybe four sets of classes. So eight years, maybe, of uh, the jazz course. And also, there was a performing arts acting course. Um, so people were doing acting, which uh, you did. Uh, the the uh, tech course did all the production for that as well. So mm. um, there was this whole scene up at SMB, a really good scene. So Adam Roach put this together. It was a great night. You Some know, key names there, Jeff Hamsley, Kaz Anderson, John Bennett and the SMB Student Association mm, all involved in that. Yeah, and yeah, I reckon there was a good 150, 200 people there at SMB, you know, on a, on a Wednesday, oh, you know, middle of the week and, you know, it just showed there was a great scene happening at the time and we talked about it earlier, <coughs> the Barrett scene was really great and it was helped by, you know, the, the Melbourne... A, a stop over to Adelaide sort of thing. Look um, at this dodgy little version where <laughs> they printed it and wrote on it with text. Yeah, the front and probably looks great. Use, they probably use the uh, SMB Student Association photocopier. Yeah, the front looks great and professional and then there, there it is. So after the first Ballarat, did someone here say Ballarat, uh, you ran with it for a few more years with the course, Rex. Yes, the uh, yeah. Diploma of Entertainment course, Volume 2, Volume 3 and Volume 4. Mm. We usually did a, a live... Um, recording weekend in the middle of July yep. and then we mixed it. Uh, it was part of the course for yep. students to actually mix all the songs. Yep. Uh, and then we released it in November usually of, yep. of the same year. Yep. So two, three and four were all recorded live at Granary Lane. And if you just have a go back to that, uh, Ainsley Wills I did the jazz course with. Yes. Fantastic singer. Um, yeah, well amazing. known on now on the Melbourne scene. Yep. Um, but she came to Ballarat as a young girl, she was 18, and saw this whole fantastic scene happening. From so Albury? Yes, that's right, yep. yep. Wodonga. Um, and so, because there was a fantastic scene, people like that got encouraged to pick up their guitar and write songs. Same here, Aurora Jane, fantastic uh, female guitarist. Uh, she's she's now in Canada? Yeah, uh, she's, uh, spent a, she's had a career in music, travelling the world, 
And one of the best guitarists in Ballarat. She's and an amazing fabulous. engineer and yep. producer as well. Yep. Hello, Jane, if you're watching. Yeah, and yeah, really one of my favourite guitarists. She's a really good guitarist. There's Big Fat Skank there, who are cousins with the Boxing Toss Stardust. Yep, yep, one of my favourite Ballarat bands of all time. And a bit lower down, the Turnarounds, who got a record deal with, um, I think it was called Monarch, and it was Brad Shepard from... Um, Hoodoo Gurus. Hoodoo Gurus. So they supported, uh, the Monarchs were a band uh, that Brad had started and they made one record and they played at the Bridge Mall Inn mm. and the Turnarounds supported them and the Turnarounds put on a massive show. They were fantastic. Brad Shepard was in the crowd. I drank with him afterwards. The Turnarounds blew the power in the middle of a broadcast at Cranery <laughs> Lane once. <laughs> yeah, right. But Brad Shepard was blown away. He said, I haven't seen a band like that for years and he signed them. And, um, we also have the debut of the Underminers here with Page 21. Wow. Possibly before they'd released anything else. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, okay, Either yeah. that or just after their first album. Yep. Anyway, we're whipping through. That's Volume 3. Unfortunately, I didn't bring Volume 4 with me. <coughs> no, <coughs> so, um, uh, Tell us about Mark Ballarat Bitter, Six Pack. Yeah, when Mark and Neil came and took over, uh, they were interested in all this sort of history and found out about the Ballarat compilations. So we had an idea of a variety six-pack. So we all used to drink beer, six-pack. Uh, you could get thing, a thing called a variety six-pack, which had different beers in it. So we thought six different bands. So they were managing Epicure. Epicure on first, Salesman second. Uh, my band, the Rycatchers, were on third. Was there a tour? Uh, there was a Ballarat launch and a Melbourne launch Yep. Uh, at the corner hotel. So it was very good. Now, the artwork was... Uh, the signage is the Ballarat Bitter sign on Lion Street, the gro old grocery store. Yep. And we, in the middle, it usually had, it, to, to this day, and it has for, you know, the last 50 or 60 years, has Ballarat Bertie in the middle. Um, and we were just going to take a, str a street sh shot of that and put Ballarat Bitter on it. Um, at the time, a band called the Popping Mummers had been sued by CUB just oh. recently because they had, instead of VB, they put P. M, popping mummers, and it looked like a VB sign. So that had just happened, and Ballarat Bitter is owned by CUB. So we thought we, we didn't want to get in trouble, basically. So we had a great photo of Ange Haywood, who was Hap Haywood's wife, uh, sister, walking past the Ballarat Bitter sign with a guitar, and then the Ballarat um, Bertie in the background. So we changed it because legally if you change the sign up you won't get sued that was the sort of thinking is so that Angie's sister that is a sort of graphic image of Angie's sister it looks like Julitha it does look like Julitha doesn't it yeah, yeah. but uh, Angie's sister was walking past with a cowboy hat and a guitar in the photo and, and of course years later I realized that we would have got away with it because it's just a street scene you're allowed to take a street scene of people walking past the sign. That's right. And Julitha refers to Julitha Ryan, of course, who was the keyboard player with the Dead Salesman for some time. That's right, yep. All right, let's move on. Cliffy Davis, they're actually all... Uh, Cliffy and Rod studied at Ballarat University and they lived in Ballarat for a while and they're a fantastic band on the scene for quite a while. Very 60s sort of sound. <laughs> Lovely guys, um, five-piece, so they did very well in Ballarat and Melbourne. Uh, and I just used to love them. I've got they were a bit silly too, weren't they? Yeah, that's right. They did sort of uh, off, to, off Austin Powers. Um, they did um, the, the song uh, BBC, they used to BBC, BBC One. Slag off Ballarat. Like they used to say, oh, flat white. Oh, sorry, no one in Ballarat would know what a flat white was. <laughs> that's right. You're all drinking cappuccinos yeah, up here. Yeah, that's right. And, but they had a song, you know, they got embraced Ballarat. There's a song about Radio Dave. Um, that's right. Yeah. So Great band. I, I had several of their CDs, even though they were a Melbourne band. Now, Matt Walker came to Ballarat with Broderick Smith as his guitarist. He was only 17 or 18 and played at the Bridge Mall Inn and I met him that night and we've been mates ever since. I've got, as we'll see in a second... I've yeah, got Rod's has got pretty much all of Matt <laughs> Walker albums and a lot of them signed, of course, too. Yeah. So we'll, we will, we'll flick through and have a look at some of those. In fact, let's just show these three because I think they're really important. So... There's the Matt Walker Ash Davies. I don't know what year that is. We can flip it over and have a look, I guess. It'll be about 2000. Yeah, 2000-ish, yeah. That's a great photo of uh, Ash there. I love yep. that one. So uh, there, there's, there's one. And yep. I love that one because they're both got a white background. They're doing yeah, what they do. Great. This one, uh, that one you just showed, came after this one. It was an album after this one. Soul Witness, they won an aria for this one. It's a fantastic yeah, wow. album. So. Fantastic. You know, um, yeah, so Matt would 
uh, come to Ballarat and crash at our house. And um, we became really good, great mates. I saw him about a month ago at uh, the Beast of Bourbon. And um, he's now playing with Tex Perkins. Yes. He's, he's Tex is lead guitarist. So um, and Ash is also playing with the Dingoes on the Dingoes tour. Yep. Oh, sorry, there's a bit of a reformation of the Dingoes. But um, uh, Ash Davies is playing on the Models tour. Oh, wow. He's drumming with Models. Wow, fantastic. So that is going to be something killer to yeah, look out yep. for. Ruds, here's one of the many autographed yeah, things. so I, I, I haven't sort of mentioned it, Rexy. We talked about the posters before. And so I lived in share houses like we all did, and we used to take the posters off the wall and put them up in our share houses to make them look cool. Mm. And uh, because I worked at the pub and also as a punter, I would just buy the CDs if I liked the bands. And um, You liked all the bands, yeah, right? I liked all the bands. <laughs> <laughs> and I just sort of uh, would talk to, the, talk to them afterwards as well. So Spencer Quaid played quite a bit in Ballarat as the Spencer P. Jones and Cow Penalty. Yep. Uh, and got to know Spencer a little bit. Um, very nice guy, very down to earth. Um, Beast of Bourbon were one of my favourite Australian bands. Absolutely brilliant band. Well, that answers a question I was going to ask you later on. So Beast of Bourbon, yeah, mm, right up yeah, there Yeah, wild, wild band. And um, Spencer, of course, has passed away recently. But um, in, after, if he wasn't playing with Beast, he had his own stuff. And yeah, they played quite a bit in Ballarat as Spencer P. Jones. And, yeah, I bought several of their CDs, and, yeah. Wonderful. Great stuff. Next, we move to Bazark. Yes, Featuring Bizarre. the fantastic Gareth Skinner. Yes, and that's, I think, And I had well. the pleasure of working with him only, not last weekend, the weekend before. That's and right, with Ergot. Yeah, and the sound, I've, I've, I forgot how much I miss that guy's sound. Yep. What a unique bass sound. Yep. Fantastic musician. Um, cello player as well, cello of course. Cello player, a piano player, VCA. So these guys all met at VCA, which is Victorian College of Arts. They can all play better than anyone else I've ever seen. Yeah. Bizarre. I've got all their stuff. I absolutely loved them. Went to all their gigs, Ballarat, Melbourne, for festivals. Just whenever they played, I went and saw them, basically. Is that classic minimalist font for a CD? Yeah, yeah. Bit of uh, old typewriter sort of uh, yep. writing. Uh, What's your favourite Bizarre album? Uh, the first one is an absolute killer, yeah. Yep. The second one, and that's, this is a great album. Interesting but, um, image there. Yeah. Yeah, they just made two albums and one EP, and, and Rex has just shown them. Um, and oh, another signed one? So signed one, yep. Great imagery here. Yep. Um, yeah, just a fantastic band. Just uh, Br uh, Fergus is a fantastic guitarist, one of the best guitarists in the world, I, I believe. Um, one of my favourite bands ever at The Rat Mate was this band. Yes, th that's right. So I think it went, Matt played with um, who knows, Broderick Smith and then uh, not long after he, he came up and it was the first time I'd met Ash and, um, oh my God, I can't remember the bass player. Andrew Enchi. Enchi, lovely Enchi. Enchi was a, um, an amazing uh, floor and stage manager and I worked with him at the ESPY on three PBS Live to Airs on okay. Anzac Day Anarchy and Cup Day Chaos. Right. He was the most incredible mentor for running a stage, right. doing changeovers, yep. jumping on the mic and being a host, if you like. Yep. So uh, he was someone uh, incredibly missed and Bags and I were mentored by the whole PBS crew for broadcasting and recording. Right. So we love that. But getting this... This album, There's Life, was amazing. I think you, everyone now knows that short live recording up at Triple B where they play live yep. a couple of hours before they went to the Rat. Yep. And it was just a wonderful show. And I think Jake Stark uh, interviewed them afterwards. Um, you can go, you can search Mighty Servant here in the archives of the Bridge Mall Inn group and, yep. and Fantastic hear band. that live recording. There's also lots of live recordings I did at the Rat, um, some featuring Andrew who passed away in... Yep. You know, around That's the right, year yep. 2000. Uh, yeah, so they not long after that, um, Matt came up with, with Mighty Servant. And uh, again, there it is, signed. Matt's, uh, Matt's done yep. a picture even. Um, yeah, lovely guys, fantastic players, great band. And yeah, they used to pack out the Bridge Mall Inn. And uh, funny, I moved to Melbourne for a little while. Um, and I remember reading a street press, and they'd been playing in Melbourne of, as well. And uh, I was, uh, yeah, the street press, beat. Mm. Um, they said, what's your, one, of, one of the questions was, what's your favourite gig? And they said Ballarat, and and the and the interviewer went, oh, yeah, right, really. And they went, no, no, really. <laughs> they said we pack it out. They love us. They just get us. They, they said, that, you know, people in Fitzroy or whatever sort of hang back, and the Fitzroy cool sort of thing, you know. Um, Ballarat people just get up and dance and go crazy. Um, so yeah, they pulled a hundred every time they played. 
as I said, everyone danced and had a great time. They were a brilliant band. I remember reading a comment only the other week from the bread makers saying, we do remember the Bridge Mall Inn, yep. and it was an awesome place to play, and geez, those publicans, they knew how to look after a band. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> which right. means late night lock-ins, that's drinking right. upstairs, I think. Here's Molly yep. Servant. Yep. Slurper were a band who came from a band called Hurdy Gurdy. The green's not showing up well because we're... We're shining a blue light on it, but it is, in fact, a green album. Girl Germs is the name of this one, produced by the band and Matt Hills, I reckon. Um, and also featuring um, um, Christine Summerfield. Right. A Eva Summerfield That's on, right, on bass. On bass, and yep. Christine was her sister, right. who was the sound engineer for, right. for that band. Uh, they were amazing. Um, of course, from Adelaide, other than Artie Raylene, the band that had the most uh, popularity from Adelaide, I think, was mm. um, Clowns of Decadence. Yeah, that's right. They were fantastic. Um, crazy, crazy show. Um, fire breathing, sword swallowing. Um, yeah. Look at them. They were on um, Hey Had Saturday one night, I remember watching Were they? Yeah, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yep, yep. Oh, imagine trying to get that... that yeah, well, the, the, it was Adelaide um, Grand Prix, so oh, Hey Hey were over there instead right. of in Melbourne. We won an Adelaide band. Yeah, yeah. and uh, clans, clans were on it. So, yeah. And finally here today, uh, just with his first lot, the Ergo Derivative, who two weeks ago did a, a nice little 33-year tour. Mm. They did three gigs in 25 years, I worked out. Yeah. Uh, played at the Eastern here in Ballarat and also the Northcote Social Club. Yeah, not, uh, again, Gareth Skinner uh, played bass in this band and had a lot to do with it. Uh, these guys are also mates, I think, from um, VCA as well. And, and they started before Bazark, so I'm not sure whether sort of Bazark sort of took over for Gareth and, and that Well, was Jamie Sachs uh, on guitar and vocals at the other day at the uh, Northcote Social Club, he said, such and such played bass when Gareth went off to play with Bazark. Yeah, so, so I, I'm not sure whether... Uh, th so they only made one album. Uh, it's yep. a very... Uh, I would say early Pink Floyd in influenced, yeah, yeah. Um, Sid Incredible. Barrett, yeah. Sid Barrett um, style, and they had a fantastic gig at, gig at the Bridge Mall in one night where they had a fluorescent sort of rope, and they got into the crowd and, and sort of tied the crowd up. Wow. They weaved their way through the crowd while playing an extended solo, and um, and had fantastic sort of lights that picked up this fluorescence. Wow. And I think they were all sort of maybe painted a bit fluorescent as well. Um, so it, it was this fantastic sort of, yeah, real Pink Floyd early days UFO sort of club feel well, about Once the again, we'll, we'll put a few things. We might even just put some links in the description of where you can go to listen to some of this stuff because some of it's online. Yeah, that's right. Yep, yep, that's um, yep. So Ergo Derivative. The only story I heard that worth, is worth mentioning here is that apparently the... the uh, the engineer from the Ergo Derivative, who's now longer, no longer with us, used to go and burg houses um, between the sound check and the gig. Oh, my God. Had a heroin habit, I think. Uh -huh. And so the band would often have to shove their gear in amongst the stolen equipment right. <laughs> to get back to Melbourne, which is a pretty ugly story. But, yeah. but uh, there we go. The Ergo Derivative fear of a flat earth. Yep.